Well, good morning and blessings, church, uh, on this wonderful, beautiful, cold Sunday morning, the last day of July. And uh, I know some of you enjoyed watching the Olympics, probably not sleeping, hallelujah. But today we're here to hear the word of God. And um, this morning I'm going to be sharing a message which has got a, a dual title. And it's um, the word of God in your heart is the one message. But there's going to be a focus on the second part of this message, which you can also call how to pray effectively for the unsaved. Now, many years ago, every time I used to preach, I used to get a story. The Holy Spirit would give me a story. And I'd always share this story before I preach. And I'm going to share with you one of these old stories. Now, this is a story about Friendly Farmer Fred. And Friendly Farmer Fred had a fruit farm in a fertile location. Fred is a man of faith, and he's a fantastic farmer. Now, what happened is Fred was looking out over his field one day and he said, Lord, you're my God, you're my supply. I pray, Lord, that you will give me a mighty crop so that I would have the biggest harvest that I've ever had in my life. And as he's praying, an angel descended from heaven and stood before him and said, Fred, God has heard your prayer and he's going to give you such a great crop and you're going to have the greatest harvest that you've ever seen in all your career as a farmer. So Fred would walk out every morning. He'd walk out and look over his field. He'd see nothing. He did this for the first seven days and nothing. So he waited another week and went outside, looking over his field and saw nothing growing. This happened first month, second month, third month. Still no crop. And he's thinking, I'm trusting in God all the way. Six months had passed and still Fred's looking over this field and there's not one sign of anything growing in his field. This went on every month, every month until the 12th month. And Fred's there said, God, you told me, you sent me an angel to say that you've heard my prayer, yet there's no crop, nothing, nothing has grown at all in these 12 months. And all of a sudden, that same angel appeared before Fred and said, he said, Fred, yes, God had heard your prayer. He said, but there's no crop. He said, do you think that at least you could have sown some seed? <laughs> and I can assure you, without a seed, there is no harvest. Without a seed, there is no harvest. And we know that God could have planted the seed. But the reason I share this story with you is it's relevant to what I'm sharing today. We know that everything starts with a seed. Everything, even our very own life, started with a seed. However, this is not a biology lesson. Today is a sermon. But I want to share with you this morning, this morning from Mark chapter 4. I'm going to be, you can see the scriptures up on the screen. I'm going to be reading nine verses to you right now from Mark chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through to 9. So let's get into the word. Are you ready to receive this morning? Amen. Amen. It says here, and again he began to teach by the sea. This is talking about Jesus. And it, and it says a great multitude was gathered to him so that he got into the boat and sat on the sea and the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. Verse 2 says, then, then he taught many things by parables and said to them in his teaching, listen, behold, a sower. We're talking about a sower, someone who sows seed. A sower went out to sow. And it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it scorched and became and, and because it had no root, it withered away. Verse 7 says, And some seed fell among the thorns. So, so far we've seen the wayside, the stony ground, and the thorns. And it says, And the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. Verse 8 says, But other seed fell on good ground. Say good ground. Good ground. Good ground. Some seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop. And it sprung up, it, 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 sorry, it says it, and it yielded a crop that sprung up, increased and produced some 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some 100-fold. And he, talking about Jesus, said to them, 
He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Are you hearing this morning? Yes. Are, you, are your ears working this morning? I've got my hearing aids on praise God. That term refers to a hearing and teachable heart. And we see here, as I mentioned, that there were four places where the seed had landed. It's virtually like a place where the seed fell or a type of soil. And where the seed landed or where the seed fell made all the difference. It was the same seed, but it was, it was different where the seed had landed. Now, I studied agriculture when I was at school and I, I truly know the importance of the condition of the soil, how important it is when it comes to planting, when it comes to seeing a crop grow, and particularly ready to produce a harvest. Also, when I was much younger, I always helped my, my father and my grandfathers uh, working in the gardens. And in fact, my mum's father had a backyard that was 60 metres long, which I think is about 200 feet. That was just his backyard. It's a, it was a, a, a 300 foot long block. And he had, you name it, every type of fruit tree, veggie growing, no marijuana. We're Lebanese, we're not that Lebanese, praise God. But he had so many different trees and so many veggies growing, it was just amazing. But I can tell you, when we used to work in that garden, preparing the soil, maintaining the garden, it was very hard work, and but it was always ongoing. It took a great effort. You know, we used to do digging, watering, fertilizing, pruning, weeding, treating pestilence and bugs and cleaning up around the garden. I'm talking hours and hours of work. And it was all done so that we could produce a crop that would bring in a harvest, so that we could eat the beautiful fresh fruit and veggies. I wish we had them this day, mate. I mean, Amen. yesterday I had this uh, sweet potato. It had zero flavor, not not any flavor at all. <coughs> But in saying that, it was a great effort for a great harvest. It took a great effort to get a great harvest. And I can assure you that no farmer or gardener will ever sow a seed unless they first prepare the soil and they sow in the right season and in the best conditions possible so that they will produce a crop so that in the essence of their aim or goal is to, to reap a harvest to reap a harvest, and it all starts with the condition of the soil. They also um, keep working on the soil, um, doing all things necessary like water, watering, fertilising and weed control, pestilence. Everything they need to do is ongoing and it's all so that they can reap a harvest. Now again, this is not an agricultural lesson, this is a sermon. But there's a reason I said all of that, it was relevant because what this parable was talking about was talking about the soil of our hearts, the soil of our hearts. And this parable in Mark chapter 4 relates to the soil of our hearts. And the seed in this parable refers to the living word of God. As Christians, we have to ensure or put in the effort into maintaining the soil of our hearts and that effort is ongoing. Just like looking after a garden or a farm, that effort has to be ongoing. Now, in this scripture I shared with you um, in Mark chapter 4, it noted that there were four types of places or four soils where the seed was sown and landed. The first one was the wayside. The second was the stony ground. The third was the thorns. And the fourth was the good soil. Now, I, want to read, uh, I won't read to you, but in Mark chapter 4, verses 10 to 12, Jesus told them the, the purpose of the parable. But if you can put up there verse 11, it says, um, basically, Jesus was saying, the reason for the parable is so that the believer will know the mystery of, of the kingdom of God, as you can see there. The believer can know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Now, we will read on further in a bit. Bit, but I want to let you know that in Mark chapter 4, verses 13 to 20, Jesus explained this parable to, to the disciples. Now, um, in verse 13, if you put that on the, on, in the screen, the NLT says it's a very powerful key here. It said, Then Jesus said to them, If you can't understand the meaning of this parable, how will you understand all the other parables? 
So it's important that as believers, we understand exactly what this parable is talking about because if we don't understand this parable, we can't understand any of the parables. Now I want to read to you um, from Mac, uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 14 to 15 as Jesus explains the parable to them. Verse 14 says, The sower sows the word. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sowing and when, the he, when they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. So we see here that the wayside represent where Satan comes and he immediately comes and steals that word sown in their hearts. Verse 16, it said, These likewise, likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness and they have no root in themselves and so endure only for a time. So that means it doesn't last very long. And afterward, when tribulations or persecution arises, for the word's sake, it says, that tribulation and persecution comes for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Or another version says they, they are offended. So we see here that the stony ground represents those who, when tribulation and persecution comes for the word's sake, they immediately stumble. But it's important to note that they, the persecution and the tribulation came simply to take the word of God from them. Let's move on to the third one, which is the thorns. And I'm reading from verse 18. Now it says, Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in, choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. So we see here amongst the thorn that because of all people's concerns with the things of the world, riches and desires for other things, that comes in and it literally chokes the word so that the word becomes unfruitful. And verse 20, I wonder, this is the one on the good soil. And it says here, but these are the ones sowing on good ground. Good ground. Those who hear the word, they accept it and bear fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. So we see here in all of these four areas the difference in where the word was sown. And it was only on the good soil where the word was accepted and it was it became to a place where it bared fruit. Some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. There's a whole message in the 30, 60, and 100, but it, that, that's a whole other message in itself. But the question I want to ask you this morning is we're talking about the soil of our hearts and where the word is to be sown is, how is your heart? I don't mean your physical heart this morning, but how is your heart as mentioned in the Bible? You know, when the Bible states heart, it's literally referring to your mind. It's referring to your soul realm. Some say your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, your understanding. And that can also include your conscious and subconscious mind. In the book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23, as you see on the screen here, the, wisdom, the book of wisdom tells us to keep your heart with all diligence. Say diligence. Diligence. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it spring the issues of life. If we keep our heart right with all diligence, that's where the issues of life spring from. The easy to read version is not on the screen, but it says, be careful what you think because your thoughts control your mind. The AMPC, AMPC, the Amplified Classic should be on the screen. And it says, guard your heart with all vigilance, with all vigilance and above all that you guard for out of it flow the springs of life. It's so important that we are told in the word that we should keep our heart with all diligence, with vigilance, which means to keep it guarded and virtually guarded. When you study that word, it's like guarding it, keeping it protected within a prison. Ezekiel 36, 26 tells us, 
The Lord says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. You can't grow anything good on stone. I can see the moss growing out there on the actual, but generally speaking, you can't grow anything good on a stone. I believe this next scripture I'm going to share with you is one of the most powerful verses in the Bible. It's from Jeremiah 23, 29, and it says, Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? The word of God is like a hammer that smashes and breaks rocks. And the word can soften the hardest heart. If we keep the soil of our heart right, ready to receive the word of God, it will produce a harvest. It will produce fruit. The Bible tells us some 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some 100-fold. But the revelation I want to share with you this morning is a revelation I received from Mark chapter 4, and it's also found in Matthew chapter 13, is, is about how we should pray when we're sowing the word of God, particularly to the lost or the unsaved. There is uh, no use sowing if the soil or the heart is not right. And we need to prepare the soil, we prepare people's hearts in prayer so that when we sow the word of God, we will see a harvest. Now, I've heard, I've heard many preachers say that when you read these, these parables of the soil, where you see, you know, three, three times it tells us the wayside, the stony ground and the thorns, that, you know, that word is basically, doesn't produce anything. And it's only that one part, that 25% of the seed that is sown will bear any fruit. But I, I have a different view on that because I don't believe people who say that truly have a revelation on how we should be sowing the seed so that we can see every seed that we sow bring in a harvest. And that's what I want to share with you this morning. I believe that as we sow the word, sow the seed, sow the word of the living God, which lands on good soil, good ground in our heart, it will produce a harvest. And that is what we believe in the mighty name of Jesus. But what about the other three places? You know, many years ago, I, I had a, uh, was a man of God who uh, is from America. His name is uh, Reverend, uh, Bishop Tom Brown. And he, he's a very powerful man of God. And he moves very powerfully in signs, wonders, deliverance. Uh, he's got quite a few followers, uh, I believe, online. And he, he shared a story many years ago of when he was praying for his grandfather who was dying in hospital. And he's saying, Lord, I've prayed for my grandfather. I've, I've shared the word of God with him over all these years and he's just about to die. And he said, the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said to him, command Satan from stop stealing the word of God from his heart. But he said he prayed that prayer. He went to visit his grandfather, shared the word of God with him. And as he commanded Satan to stop stealing the word of God from his heart, he said when he shared the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ with his grandfather, he doesn't know how many times before, but he said at that time, his grandfather's eyes opened, his heart was ready to receive, and he invited Jesus Christ into his life before he passed. And I, I can't remember how long yeah. after that his grandfather passed, but I, from memory, it wasn't very long. And that has always stuck with me. And that is the seed that was by the wayside. We have the power and authority to command Satan to stop stealing the word of God from people's hearts. So, so therefore, we've gone from 25% to 50%. We want to take it up another 25%. And then we can pray against the stony ground. And we can pray that the word of God, as we sow it, it takes root and that it grows and we can pray against affliction and persecution coming against these people that is making them stumble. The trial, the tribulation and the persecution come simply for the word's sake. As we saw in, um, if you can put verse 17 up there, it says um, that tribulation and persecution arises for the word's sake. It, that only comes to steal the word of God from their heart. And it says they immediately stumble. That word can also be offence. If you look at the King James Version, that word stumble is also is, is written in there as the word offence. And offence is one of Satan's biggest attacks on believers. Offence is a stumbling block. 
and we should be very, very vigilant, church. I, I may need to preach a message on offence, but we should be very, very vigilant and aware. As soon as we see a situation that we can be offended, we have to identify, we need to rebuke it, and we need to walk in forgiveness and love and don't fall into the trap of Satan. Offence is a huge trap and we need to avoid it at all costs because there's too much at stake for us to stumble and we should not be offended. Uh, I could share with you so many stories of being involved in church life for, for 30 years. I mean, bad enough in workplaces, but what I've seen in churches over 30 years, I, I could, uh, I'm not going to share any stories with you, but I can assure you I've seen many people stumble because of that one trap of the enemy, that, that offence. But let's see here so that when we see the, that, that situation where people are, are in are the stony ground situation, we need to pray and take action against that and pray that people will not be persecuted or afflicted so that they do not stumble. So then we've got 75% and we're going for 100. Let's go to the area of the thorns. We can pray against the cares of this world the deceitfulness of riches and the desire for other things entering people's hearts because that chokes the word of God. And we need to pray that they will not be choked by all these things, but that, that the word that we sow will not be, uh, will not be uh, stopped so that they will become fruitful. Amen? Amen. So um, one other thing that I, I got a revelation from God of many, many months ago is something else that we need to pray when we're praying for unbelievers. And we're going to be praying for the lost, the unsaved a bit late, very soon. But one other thing that we need to pray against or take authority over is what's known as the mind-blinding spirit. Now, up on the screen here, I've got the uh, NIV version of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 to 4. Are you getting something out of this this morning? Yeah. yeah. Now verse 3 says, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. And verse 4 says something very powerful here. It says, The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. Talking about Satan. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God. Because we have power and authority over the enemy, we can take authority over Satan from blinding the mind of unbelievers. And we need to use our authority and our power to take authority over this mind-blinding spirit in the name of Jesus. And as I'm going to be praying shortly for, for uh, the lost, your fam lost family, unbelievers around this area, family and friends, We'll be praying that they will all be saved. And we're going to do it based on what I've told you this morning. And we're going to come into a prayer of agreement this morning. You know, the power of a prayer of agreement is so powerful. Yeah. I, I can share with you so many testimonies. When I've come into a prayer of agreement based on this next scripture, I'm going to share with you from Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, of how many times I've seen the hand of God move so, so powerfully. Matthew 18 verse 19 says, Again I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, yeah. it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. That's a scripture that you should know and memorize because the prayer of agreement based on God's word is a very, very powerful thing. Now, when it comes to, back to the gardens, um, you know, I, I, I remember we used to do a lot of pest control and Many, many people probably know, uh, probably not from this area so much, but people of middle, mid Mediterranean origin, when they're growing their fruit trees, they often cover them with these big nets and they, they spray pestilence and they really take a, a mighty care of from keeping bugs and worms and all these sorts of things away. And they, they grow these things sometimes in controlled greenhouses to protect their crop from pestilence and from by eating by birds and fruit bats. They basically protect the crop so that they can produce and have a harvest. And this, again, should relate to what we're doing with God's Word. We need to do everything in our power to protect that seed, the Word of God, to ensure that it produces a crop to, so that we can reap a mighty harvest. 
We need to pray. We need to apply the blood of Jesus. We need to be fighting in the spiritual realm. And it's ongoing, just like looking after a garden. This is ongoing and it takes effort. And the only way that you're going to see a harvest is if you put in the effort, put in the prayer, use the word of God, stand up and use your authority. And if you want to see a harvest, it doesn't take work. It takes effort. It takes time. It takes dedication. And the only way that we're going to see our mighty harvest is by us putting in the effort to see that word of God produce fruitful, a fruitful harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be praying this very, uh, very soon. Um, uh, praying this morning for those that you know are unsaved, your lost family and friends. And we're going to be using our power and authority. And, and I'm going to pray that as we pray in faith in the word of the living God, that we're going to see a mighty harvest in the name of Jesus. Now, I've got a few points here that I can, I'm going to be sending to everybody via email. And this is what I'm going to be praying very soon. I'm going to ask everybody to stand as we pray. Because I really want you to, to bring to mind your family who are unsaved, your friends. Right now I've had a few people have to leave. They've asked me to include their family. So I'm going to be praying for all the, the members of lost family and friends. I'm going to be praying over the people of this area here. What I'm going to be doing this morning, I've got five quick points as I'm also going to be praying other things. But... Firstly, we're going to be binding the mind blinding spirit, uh, uh, that is the God of this world, from blinding unbelievers' uh, mind to come into the truth of the light of the gospel. We're going to command Satan to stop stealing the word of God from people's hearts. We're going to pray that the word of God takes root as we sow it, it grows. And, and we're going to pray against affliction and persecution coming against the unbelievers to make them stumble or offended simply because of the word's sake. We're going to pray against the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the desires for other things entering people's hearts and choking the word of God in their lives. And we're going to pray that the word of God sowing will be fruitful. And we're also going to pray that we, as we pray and believe that as we sow the word of God, that we're going to see that that seed will land on good soil, a heart ready to receive the word of God. And we pray that as they hear the word of God and accept it, that they, they will accept it, it will bear fruit, some 30, some 60, and 100 fold. Now in saying that, if you remember my first story that I shared, we need to be sowing, sowing the word of God. You need to be active in sowing the word, in sharing the gospel, in sowing that seed. If you're not sowing the seed, you're not going to see a harvest. So it is up to you to reach these people, speak to these people, be bold, stand out there, share the word of God, sow the word of God, share the gospel of the good news with them. And this is how we start to see the harvest come forth. It all starts with the word of God. So let's begin to pray, Heavenly Father. Lord God and Father, we just give you thanks and praise. Lord, I thank you for this word. I thank you for the revelation. I thank you, Lord, that as we understand this parable, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that we can pray using our power and authority. I thank you, Lord, that we have the seed, the word of the living God, that we can sow to unbelievers, Lord. We can sow that word so that as we share the word of God with them, Lord, we are praying and believing for, the, for every unbeliever in this region, for every family member, every friend that we can think of right now. Uh, we pray, Lord God and Father, that for every unsaved person that we know, Lord, that they will be saved. And I pray, Lord God and Father, that as the seed is sown, the word of God, I pray, Lord, that you will raise up laborers to go out and sow the word of God, to speak the truth of your living word, to speak the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that as this seed is sown, Lord, we just take authority over the seed that is sown from everyone, Lord, here in this message. As that seed is sown, Lord, we just bind the mind-blinding spirit that from the God of this world, from Satan, blinding the minds of unbelievers. We take authority over that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We command you, Satan, to stop stealing the word of God from people's hearts. On this area, from our family and friends and loved ones, we command you, you cannot steal the word of God from their hearts 
In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that as the word of God is sown, that it takes root, that it grows, and we pray and rebuke every form of affliction and persecution, any tribulation coming against them to make them stumble or offended simply for the word's sake. We also pray, Lord God and Father, that the cares of this world, the deceitful of, rich, of riches, and, and the desires for other things will not enter their hearts and will not choke them for, for the word sake. And I pray that as this word is sown, that it will bear much fruit in the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray, Lord God, that as we sow this word of God, as we sow your word, I pray that it will land on good soil, a heart ready to receive the word of God. We pray that they will hear the word, they will accept it, and they will bear fruit. And I pray that they will be born 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. And if you believe that, can you agree with me right now by saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Amen. Hallelujah.